All right, so we're streaming now, hopefully. on this project in a while so I don't know I can't remember how everything was laid out things don't know <laughs> okay Painting, and I could show the UVs on the painting panel. Every size brush. Okay, so looks like we have some viewers. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I created this character here. It's gonna be like a cat, cat or a kitten or whatever you want to call it. Just some sort of animal, basically. Now I'm basically adjusting the UVs here. If you could see that, it might be difficult to see. Maybe I should change the color of the... Let me see what I can do here. If I just could select all that. And let's see. Go back 
into painting mode. And then I could choose the paint bucket tool and then choose a different color. Let's say let's choose that color. Oh, I also have the alpha channel. And then make sure that the contiguous or whatever is off. And then I could just click that and then maybe adjust these a little bit. Because I want the checkered pattern because that helps see if the pixels are stretched out or not. Okay, so now let me zoom out a little bit. And, oops. Okay. Hold space bar and move the pan. Okay, so now you can see the UVs a little bit better on the darker background. Okay, so let's see, what am I gonna do here? Oh yeah, I was gonna paint on the UV. So I'm not sure uh, if I want the UV like that. I was just messing with it just right now, so I could I could change those around if I want. Maybe move it over there. Um, I haven't really shaped the front of the character yet, or the bottom chin area, so I could probably do that. Basically, and then if you don't know what crack tile is, well, you probably do if you've been following me. But anyways, you use like the tiles to construct 3D models and that sort of stuff, and then you could like adjust the geometry of it. So I could go into the tile set mode and adjust the grid rounding value, make it a little smaller so that can move the vertices a little more at smaller uh, intervals. Maybe I can move it right there, something like that. Uh, let's see, maybe like that. I also have the mirror mirroring on for this object that I'm working on. You go into the scene right here. I named it the head, and then you can like double click and then go to mirroring. It'll automatically mirror it. As you can see, so that you could have like a symmetrical uh, model makes it a little bit easier to do that sort of thing. Okay, so I'm basically just uh, figuring out how to shape it. Let me turn those arrow helper things out. Mm. Let's see here. Go back into tile set mode. Okay, so let's see here. I could select a tile or I could just copy one if I wanted to. See, like when you select a tile, you can now place it in a scene like that. Oh no. <laughs> you can move, move the 3D crosshair around so that you could place the tile at different locations relative to the 3D crosshair and the camera orientation. And just move the camera around see where you want to place stuff like that and then I could like drag this vertice over there and just snap it on there click that one move that over there move that up okay like that all right so now we're working a little bit more like on the neck area okay if you wanted to you could just copy this down here and like drag this over there and put that there. And now you got like this chin, chin, neck area thing for the cat. Okay, so we got the front of the the cat kind of formed a little bit. You could adjust it later if you want. However you want to do it. Maybe we'll copy these down. Whatever. And then just like click and drag them. Just quickly like re snap them together to make it 
you know, look good. Yeah, that one needs to go up there. Alright. You can just select those and move it around. Now you got a little bit more of the back of the neck and whatever you're making, however you want to do it. Okay, so yeah. So now you got that geometry, and then you can just like uh, select the faces here, like that. And then you can go into the UVs, and then the UVs kind of show up for the tiles that you've selected. So we have UV over here, that's probably one of these other ones, or which one? Which one's that? You could like turn them off so that you could see which one. Is which okay? So this one's over there, so you could probably move that down there. And you could kind of click this other one so you could see where that one is, and then you could kind of move this around and figure out which vertice goes to which vertice, like that. So now you can see how it kind of lines up. And yeah. Oh, someone said something. <laughs> hey, uh, has has core. An old friend of mine. How's it going? Okay, so yeah, so we got like this these UVs here, and you can see. Because it's like checkered there, you can see if anything's like stretched out. Like over here, these pixels look kind of stretched and weird. Right there, see? So uh, you kind of adjust it like that and make it le less uh, stretched out. Okay? So it depends how you want to organize stuff. I don't really have too much experience creating models or. Uh, materials and things like that so uh, yeah, I'm still kind of learning how to what the best way to do that sort of thing is how to lay things out on the texture and that sort of stuff oh yeah so his course says it's been recommending crocodile to people that's cool appreciate that and yeah need more people to do that sort of thing because it helped me out I've been spending like all my time just developing this program and people seem to be interested in it and want more of it and that sort of stuff so it's kind of fun seeing what people can create with it okay so let's see here How's that? What is this? Um, see, the problem here right now is like I got this UV going over in this direction, but in the model here, it's just going straight down. So it's like, what do I do? see here how are my UVs all laid out I guess I shouldn't have made this uh, texture like that it's gonna make it a little bit difficult I don't know whatever <laughs> see I should have been thinking more as to how to plan this texture out Okay, so hmm. I could just let's see here. Eh, whatever. I'll just keep. I'll just keep going with it. <laughs> however, it turns out is however it'll turn out. Whatever. Okay, so I'll just move it like that 
and yeah and then I'll have this one down here just continue <laughs> the face is gonna get all split in two it's gonna be weird I don't, I don't know or I could just mm, should I just redraw everything nah I don't know this must be like the the magic of streaming begin to see the thought process and all that sort of thing <laughs> okay so let's see here uh, I, r I don't like how these UVs are all rotated I'll just I'll draw this over here. <laughs> uh, just something about it bothers me with it being rotated like that. So I'll just I'll try to make it straight. It'll probably be easier to like paint it when it's more like organized in like a more structured way instead of it being so like fluid and and uh, you know at some odd angle you know you notice stuff in life it's kind of similar that way how things are constructed in life everything has like a structure to it like a type of order you know I think about that stuff a lot okay so what am I doing here I move that yeah I could use the arrow keys to adjust stuff like that okay so now we have those let's get this other one here too why not move those over here to the side and yeah okay so that'll be like the chin area now we can go back into like the paint mode First, we gotta like select that area wherever it was. <laughs> Oops. All right. So now we can choose like the pencil tool. All right. I just hit the B key for like the brush, and then you can press E for erase. Switch between those. Okay. So I drop that color. Could like uh, paint it. Oh, another thing I could do. Let's see, I could uh, select all of these, right click, go to paint, fill solid. Oh yeah, that was easy. <laughs> okay. So now, let's see, let's get the nose over here. I could like look as I'm drawing. I could look over there and see like how it's how it's uh, shaping up. How does a cat nose look like? I'm not quite sure. Probably something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Give it a little bit of uh, what do you call that? What is that called? sort of uh, blending blending of the colors yeah from dark to light you got some inter in intermediary uh, values <laughs> some art terminology there I guess if you want to call it that yeah blend it a little bit more Oh yeah, it's called some magic, yeah. Some magic. <laughs> some some art talent. Pixel art. Getting some pixel art skills. Demonstrating that. 
Okay, so uh, yeah. Okay, so now you got like this bottom of the nose there. That's kind of crazy looking. It's, it like doesn't match up quite right there. What's going on with that? Gotta fix that. Doesn't look right. It's all messed up. You don't want it to look messed up like that. You want things to align, align with each other, right? Let's just move this over. Well, don't want to do that. <laughs> okay, let's move this. Let's move this over there. Yep. No, I just want this. Just want this vertice. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I'll just like redraw it there, and it'll be good. All right. You could like select that and then just oh wait hold on a second get the right color there and we could just yeah where is it uh yeah do that and now I could just get paint stuff paint some more right there look at that look at that nose. So now we got like this front of this cat thing. If you want to call it a cat, I don't know what it is. It's kind of it's kind of animal with a, a snout. Yeah. Do you call it a nose or do you call it a snout? I don't know. Is there like some correct an anatomical um, word for it? Let's see how that looks without the highlighted tiles. Now I could turn off the. Uh, wireframe if I want. Look at that. It's kind of cool. Let's turn that back on though. So we can see how things are structured. Okay, so let's see here. Okay. Um, I want to give it a little bit of a mouth. <laughs> Yeah, the it doesn't protrude enough. Yeah, for it to be a snout, I guess it's a little like a, a little short. And uh, I'm like, yeah, I could move it out, and make it more like a like a dog. Look at that! Look at that! It transformed into some other animal. Look at that thing. Oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, it does. It looks like a, a dog. <laughs> that's kind of fun. <laughs> oh, you thought it was a, a fox at first. Yeah, I don't know what it is. I I wanted to do like some sort of cat thing, but uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that was kind of cool. Maybe I'll leave it out a little bit like that. That's kind of yeah. That looks good, I guess. Something like that. I'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, so. Continue. Mm, maybe it needs to go like there. It's kind of weird. Let's add another color down here. Kind of 
make it uh, brighter. Like the fur is getting a little light, lighter there. I don't know. Okay, so let's work on the ears. Let's, uh, let's see what's going on with the ears. Oh man, what? Okay, that's kind of strange. Why did I make it like that? thing see how's this positioned alrighty okay okay it's over there is that right yeah okay so if you just Have I tried animating anything? No, I haven't done that yet. I want to do that, but I haven't gotten to it yet. I also want to implement uh, some animation tools into Crocodile at some point. Hopefully I'll be able to do that, but it'll require a lot of uh, work to figure that out because I have to like design uh, the uh, the interface and that sort of stuff for, for controlling that those sorts of uh, things and also because I haven't really done too much animation work myself I need to like do a little bit a uh, little bit of uh, research about that figure out what the best way to do that is. <clears throat> so I, I'll have to figure out how to like uh, store all that data and things like that. So I gotta, I gotta look into that sort of stuff. But it's on the, the uh, what do you call it? on the things to do list which I have a list that has a lot of stuff that I need to do yeah but yeah anyways <laughs> uh, yeah I also have to like kind of add more um, what do you call it a little bit more of the graphical user in interface stuff for like actions and things like that because some people tend to request that sort of thing and yeah part of the part of the uh, thing that I like about Cracktail is kind of it's minimal in the way that it presents stuff you know things don't get in the way too much compared to like other programs where things are just kind of like all over the place and you got like things to click on at every location and just overwhelms your 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 perception basically of what it is you're looking at or what you're not looking at getting distracted by all uh, all sorts of uh, text and and uh, details and things and the layout and all that sort of stuff <laughs> and yeah for a visual person like me that can be kind of 
confusing. Yeah, I used a milk milk shape in the past, milk shape 3D. That was a good program. Which which one is it? Selected something. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. So I'm just adjusting the the UVs. Obviously, these UVs are really messed up. I didn't really plan this too well. <laughs> what is going on here? GT GLTF yeah I implemented that I could uh, I could uh, go and uh, export I could, I could export the scene export objects and you could like select with which objects to, to include when you're exporting and you could choose between the OBJ and GLTF and GLB. And when you do that, you could embed the textures into it. And you could adjust the normals. You can make it smooth or flat. If you make it smooth, you can give it like a tolerance for the vertex normals uh, for each. Uh, how do I explain it? Uh, depending on how angled between t uh, polygons, it'll either smooth it out or keep it flat. And you could adjust the angle here, the angle threshold. So if you make it like 89, for some reason, if you make it 90 degrees, it doesn't, it, like, it acts weird. So I'm making 89 degrees. And for, for uh, if the faces of the polygons next to each other are less than 90 degrees it'll smooth it out but if it's greater than 90 degrees then it'll keep it like a hard edge and flat so you have that a little bit of control on that and then you can merge the vert vertices and embed the textures you can export all the textures um, uh, texture prefix then there's tile spacing which I don't really use because that's just uh, if you use tile spacing it expects all the tiles to be square and basically like the same size or relatively the same size I don't know. but uh, and then you can adjust the texture to always be a power of two dimension and you could also adjust the scale so that's basically what you can do when you're exporting and you could also go to the scene and right click and export to an object if you just want to ex export one object or you could export it to a prefab like a crocodile prefab object and then you could re-import it into another crocodile 3d scene by clicking this button um, that's if you want to like transfer stuff you've made in crocodile to other Tractile projects and that sort of stuff. Um, and there's some experimental stuff that I was working on with like normal maps and height maps and things like that. I haven't worked on that in a while though. <laughs> I should maybe work on that again. You got some transform uh, stuff if you want a little bit more control over things. If you want to type in your own values and make small adjustments and that sort of stuff. Yeah, kind of went a little uh, on a little tangent there. What was I doing? Oh yeah, I was working on the 
the ear the ear of this animal yeah I don't know who's exactly watching but it's uh, that might be some useful information for those watching get a little bit of education I don't know if that's really much education but whatever <laughs> gotta keep it interesting that's um, something I have to think about when I do these things but also like when I'm thinking about what to talk about and I'm also thinking about what I'm actually doing kind of creates like some sort of disaster in my mind okay so we got this tile here where is that tile okay it's over here so uh, let's see here so that that vertice goes there I guess and I can move this other one here and yeah I didn't really design these these uh this uh these UVs all that well <laughs> they're going all over the place but what I'm trying to do is, uh, what are these here? These don't need to be selected. I'm trying to make this ear. Okay, so I'll just, yeah, I'll just select, I'll select that. And okay, I got, which one do I have selected? I'll just make sure that color is like that. And then I'll just right click and fill that. There you go. I didn't fill it all the way though. I could right click and paint the. What can I paint here? I could do a solid. I could do a checkered. I could do. I could trace it. That'll probably get rid of those lines. So let's try that. There we go. That was easy. So now we have that. And I want to create an ear like a different color for the inside oh no what did I do <laughs> undo that okay I think I uh, I don't know what I did I think I flipped it okay so let's go back into the um, paint tab I drop that color and then I can like draw over here figure out where stuff is aligned as I'm drawing looking over here seeing how it how it changes I, I could also see the little edges of the the uh, tiles based on the UVs and kind of uh, how do I explain it I use the structure of the the tiles. Yeah, I use the structure of it uh, like that. Like these lines here. Uh, if you think about like if you're um, drawing an art, uh, uh, a drawing. If you're an artist, they use these type of lines. I forget what they're called. Maybe construction lines or something like that. I don't know. Like a grid, basically. And to put a grid over the reference image, that way they could measure things per uh, perceptively. They could gauge where the details align along the grid. Okay, so you you have this grid, and you can see relative to one line versus another line, the details within the spaces between those lines, whether they're closer or further away from one line or the other line and you could use that information to translate what you're seeing on your reference image over onto what you're drawing basically so you can kind of reproduce that image more accurately using you know those that that way of measuring stuff okay so that's what artists do sometimes when they're kind of learning to draw stuff and and yeah so the same sort of thing, same sort of uh, process here that I'm using as I'm looking at this grid here, these UVs, and I guess this is also helpful that it's actually well, yeah, I guess you would 
you draw them out on your image basically and then you draw all the detail within the spaces okay so that's what I'm doing oh man what did I do <laughs> okay so yeah there was a little bit of uh, information for you some uh, explanations for why I'm doing stuff So Hescore is asking, wouldn't it be easier just to model the entire thing first and not worry about the UVs and then have the crocodile lay out all the UVs and just draw where they want in detail? Ye hmm, let me think about that. That's, that's uh, something I want to work on as far as like features go. That is on, that's on the to-do list as far as like um, having Crocodile automatically um, manage some of the UV stuff for you and lay things out a little bit. So that might be an option. Um, the thing with that though is it's. I don't know. Like for for low poly stuff in this type of style, mm, like for high poly stuff, that makes a lot more sense to do that sort of thing. Because it would be kind of crazy to like adjust all the little polygons for something that if you have like a whole bunch of polygons and that sort of thing. But if you're doing like a low poly thing like this, and you just enjoy working with like polygons and and you just enjoy that type of process and again things really uh, neat and tidy and and clean looking you know with all like the sharp edges and the little pixels and and all that sort of detail work um, having the program do stuff for you it might be a little you might not get like the exact results that you're looking for and so I don't know it might be helpful in some cases though um, but uh, I don't know <laughs> something that I want to try and implement though at some point you know, I have a lot of things on the to-do list that I want to get to and that, that sort of thing is kind of one of them to to uh, be able to like select the faces and then have them get like flattened out and straightened on uh, the, uh, the 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 tile set, the texture or whatever. So that's something that I'm gonna try and do at some point. Implement that sort of uh, feature. And so like you might be able to just select like a few polygons or a handful of polygons and just kind of quickly flatten them and then maybe rotate them or something like that. Hopefully, I'll be able to implement that some in the future sometime. And yeah, I don't know. Having different ways to do stuff is is good. Let's see here. So I'm just kind of kind of shaping this uh, these pixels out. You know, as you can see, it's kind of a weird weird way to uh, adjust or uh, lay out the UVs. I don't know what I was thinking when I started it. <laughs> okay, so maybe I should save it. Yeah, save it. Save that. You gotta save your work. So let's see here. Looks like a duh. Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's start modeling stuff. Let's change it up. Change it up a little bit. Okay, let's go back into the tile set um, area. 
let's think about what we're gonna model. We're gonna model the neck and the body and the arms and you know, whatever, whatever then needs to be modeled. Okay. All right. So let's see here. Hmm. I'll just select the tile here. I don't know. And then I can like place it over there. <laughs> the cat dog arms, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm not really all that experienced modeling stuff, so <laughs> I'm still kind of learning myself how to how to what the best way to like triangulate all the things that sort of stuff I don't know see it selected stuff in the back so I have to like turn off this thing camera base selection got to turn that off so it only or, or turn it on or whatever so that I only select what's in front of the camera basically okay so I'll just let's see what part is this I guess it's kind of like the let's see here kind of move it and align it there just kind of shape stuff a little bit oh man what what's going on with the neck doesn't look does that look all right I don't know I can make them I can make them have like no neck I don't know <laughs> It's supposed to be low power, you right? <laughs> I don't know. Let's move that up a little bit. Whoa, whoa, what? Let's shape this. Let's shape this a little better. Yeah, that looks good. That looks a little better. Yeah. Now it has a little bit more of a neck down there, as you can see. Alrighty, so maybe we could, uh, let's see. I'll drag that over there, kind of rotate this. Maybe, uh, let's see, how do I select it with, which key is it? Like that, okay hold the control key and click near vertice to select just that vertice so that I'm not selecting both of them all right so that is more of the side of the neck area I guess look at that that's cool now we can move that over a little bit uh, maybe move it back like that I don't know just try different positions, see if it looks good, that sort of thing. Yeah, and then we could just, uh, I mean, we could just copy this thing and then just like move it over like that. And then just click, drag, hold shift to snap it onto the vertice. Now we got, we got that part there. There we go. Maybe move that down like that. Kind of going towards the back. Look at that. <laughs> Maybe just copy, copy that, paste it, and then move that down. And then move that over there snap on there come on there you go so now we got like more of the shoulder maybe move 
this uh, over a little bit yeah something like that and uh, let's see here maybe move these up a bit <coughs> Just kind of keep the polygons the uh, same sort of relative size to each other. Maybe, maybe that's important. I don't know. Don't really do. Haven't haven't had much experience doing this, but yeah. And it's kind of fun just to play with stuff, see how things turn out. You know. It's kind of like you're shaping a piece of clay. You know. Just kind of pushing things this way, that way, uh, looking at the the uh, silhouette of it and turning it different angles seeing how uh, the geometry kind of changes how how the lines and shapes change and fill the space in your eyes or whatever you know you know your eyes are like this matrix of little cones and rods and the lights kind of uh, traveling inside it and uh, hitting it in all these different locations and constructing this little or this uh, this reality that you're seeing uh, yeah <laughs> so like by moving it, uh, the uh, scene around you get to see it from different angles and and uh, get a sense of what you're you're making so there maybe that was a little interesting <laughs> Got to keep it interesting, right? So yeah, let's move that down over there. Move it over to the side. Get that uh, vertices aligned. What is this? This back, this back area. So I guess I move it down like that. That's kind of cool. You can see like the shoulder kind of uh, forming. Um, yeah, and then I copy this over. Maybe move it back like that so I can move it and then snap it over there, snap it over there, snap it over there. There you go. What's that? Why is that over there? Push that over there. Yeah. What? Get back in there. What? No. Go over there. That's where he's supposed to be. Yeah. Don't want any any uh, any gaps in the model. That sort of thing. Yeah. So now we got part of the back there. And he's just like staring, being like, "Hey, what's up?" Okay, so let's see. Do that. I'll save it. I'm, th I'm thinking uh, like how to pose it, or like how how the default position of the arms should be. Should they be straight out? Should they be angled down or what? I guess I could always change it later if I need to. Alrighty. Actually, what should I do here? Just select all of that. Move it over there. There you go. All righty, now. I want these like that. Although now it's getting kind of stretched out. That's 
click on the front of it. You could change the triangulation like that. Wait, no, like that. Shift F changes that angle of it. As you can see. So you have some control over that sort of thing. The way it bends. Should it be that way or should it be that way? Hmm. Let's try that. Just keep it simple. Trying to figure out, trying to imagine how this is going to look. So I'm kind of visualizing how I'm going to wrap the, the tiles under the arm and to the side of the body. So that's kind of a weird. Uh, weird place might have weird geometry because of the way that the arm connects to the body and that sort of thing so I gotta think about that sort of stuff um, so let's see here zoom out a bit kind of looks I didn't want to make him that thick I want him like thinner than that Maybe I could just mm -hmm, move that over like that. So this is more of the side of it, side of him. That way, something like that. Um, hmm. Still seems a little thick there. Maybe I could do that. 
want him. I don't want him like so massive looking. I want him like a like a feline sort of. I want him to look like limber. Is that the right word? I don't know. <laughs> like right now, he's looking more like a like a teddy bear type of thing. But I want him like more like cat like. a little better I think I'm, I'm like looking at like the proportions of the proportion of the body versus the head because I kind of want to have it like kind of like that chibi like big head sort of look to it compared to the body I want the body to look relatively like small and, and that sort of thing okay so Yeah, I'll just kind of like move this towel over here and just keep keep shaping it, you know, like like a piece of clay, just kind of adjusting stuff, seeing seeing how the the shape of it looks from different angles, you know. Kind of like rotating it around, just looking looking at the geometry and the shapes. See how the shapes change from different angles. Yeah, see how the form flows. <laughs> okay, so I've got to figure out how to what to do underneath this arm. Okay, just kind of move it there and. Drag that over there, I guess. Let's make this arm a little thinner because it looks a bit flat. Or not flat, it looks like, like stretched out or something. I don't know, it's weird. It's weird. So I'm looking at like this edge right here, the edge of these tiles, and I'm judging their the relativity between all of them. So I can kind of make it more rounded. See how that this opening. I'm looking at that how they look next to each other. Also, I kind of want to keep some symmetry to things, I guess. Why not? Symmetry is kind of good, isn't it? Symmetry is a good thing, right? <laughs> so, uh, what? That's like uh, one, two, three, four, five. So maybe have like one more. Make it like a hexagon shape or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm still kind of learning, like how to model stuff you know I'm not an expert at this but you don't need to be to make something you gotta start off somewhere right okay what what's going on here Oh man, that's crazy. Oh no. Wait a second, what? What's going on there? Yeah, sure, why not? I'll just keep it like that. Whatever. It's supposed to be low poly, right? Keep adding more tiles, it's just gonna get more complicated. <laughs> you gotta keep it simple, right? That's the whole point. Sometimes I like to overcomplicate stuff, you know, think too much, that sort of stuff. 
Yeah, that's kind of cool. That looks good. Look at that. It's like the arms coming out of the body. That's how it's supposed to be. <laughs> Yeah, it looks awesome. I think I did good there. Did a good job. Oh, that looks cool. Okay, let's look. Let's uh, let's do something about the back. We could just copy those down and. And then like, <clears throat> like shape it, connect those pieces back together. Just click and drag them. That's the simplest, kind of simpler, simplest way to do it. Get that over there. Put that up there. Mm, I guess put that down there. And why are these up here? The back doesn't need to be all that complicated, does it? You can maybe move these down a little bit, uh, space things out, you know, kind of balance it, right? Balance the, uh, wait a second, what's going on there? It's all like poking out on the side. What? That's kind of, it's got some back muscle. <laughs> Got some muscles in his back. <laughs> and maybe push that in like that. That's where his spine goes. That's his spine right there. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so now why is it all angled like curved? This bottom part's all curved up like that. I don't know, should it be like that? Decisions, decisions. See, like on one hand, it's nice to have things kind of all uh, aligned and straight and like tidy and that sort of thing. But then on these other cases, you have like this curved stuff. It's more fluid looking. And that can be a little bit more difficult to work with because like changes like uh, changes uh, how stuff gets uh, uh, directed it like forces you to have to go in another direction when you were already going like one direction before like you're going along here traveling along this line here and it's like yeah 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 and then whoa what's going on here what it's going up here what you know it's kind of confusing Anyways, I'll just leave that there for now. Let's, uh, I guess I could make the arm a little longer. I could just kind of copy all of these things. I could hold shift and just copy them like that. There you go. Not copy them, but select them. And then I could copy them and then paste them like that. There you go. By the way, I'm not used to streaming, so if I sound weird, <laughs> Yeah, it's because I haven't done this that much. I got some viewers, I think, yeah, about eight, eight or seven viewers. There we go. We got moving down. And by the way, uh, yeah, this crocodile thing, you could try it out. You could download it. you want to mess with it and if you don't know I created it I programmed it I'm developing it it's crocodile crocodile 3d low poly 3d modeling I construct stuff with tiles yeah it's available on Steam or there's also a non-steam version if you want.
Look at that. Now his arm's a little longer. That's cool. You can make his body a little longer too. Why not, right? Just kind of move it down. And then, let's see. I guess just go boom like that. And uh, you can make like other stuff besides uh, characters. Characters are kind of a little difficult to make because they are kind of organic. But you know, I made Crocodile 3D more of like a environmental type of tool to create environments with. Look at that. That's cool. I'm gonna save it. And then let's load this just for a quick example of stuff. Because I don't know who's watching. We got like seven viewers and that sort of thing. So I just want to show what you can do, what you can create. Okay, so like let's turn that wireframe off. Like I created this. Look at that. It's all these little tiles here. And you can just kind of like move the 3D crosser and like choose a tile. Be like building this thing over here. Actually, maybe I'll position it there and you could like draw that draw a piece over there and that and kind of like construct little buildings and and that sort of thing so that's kind of cool and you could like you could uh, position that over there and then kind of like draw like the side of it place the tile there boom boom yeah let's draw another one there look at that side of a building and you could like select more you could select the whole thing if you wanted to and just put it like that and then boom look at that you don't want it there you can move it look at that now it's down there that's amazing well you don't want it straight you want it angled go ahead you can do that look at that now the Billings is kind of collapsing and stuff. It's going into water. It's sinking. Oh my god. Look at that. It could be creative. Oh no, what happened there? <laughs> Anyways. Where was I? Okay, so. And yeah, I, uh, there's other stuff that I built as well. Actually, let's look at some stuff. Let's see here. Okay, this thing, this other thing here that I've been working on is kind of more complicated. Taking a while to make that. Turn on the double sided mode. I need to uh, let's see what what do, what do I need to do? What's what what's left to do here? I need to finish the hair. I was like texturing the hair. Um, as you can see over here, it's not um, it's not finished. Still kind of texturing this part. And yeah, I was just trying to figure out like how to draw hair because hair can kind of be difficult to draw, anyways. You know, <laughs> let alone on a three D model. But yeah, and so yeah, that's kind of unfinished, kind of rough. And I also like built it like in different pieces and that sort of thing. Thanks. Yeah, it looks amazing. And yeah, I want. I eventually, I want to uh, animate this, rig it, and animate it. But uh, I have the scene here, and I kind of separated different parts. So like the jacket and the belt and oops why is that oh that must be just in the scene C 
so that's cool. And I also need to texture the inside of the jacket. Right now it's just kind of double-sided, so what you see on outside is also on inside of the jacket. But what I need to do is I need to like model the um, I need to model the, I need to texture like the sides of the inside of the jacket. I also need to model it, I guess, put polygons facing that direction. And then um, yeah, and then it'll be basically done, I think. Could maybe do a little bit more work on the legs, but I don't know, they look fine, I guess. So what else is there? Oh, and I guess I could show you. I saved a whole bunch of different versions as well, so I don't know like what I have here. Let's see, like this is like where I was like trying to figure out like the shape of everything. And I wasn't sure exactly like what I was modeling. I just wanted to model like a human, a human form. And so I was like figuring that out. And then I was like, oh, I'll just make it like Rogue from the X-Men. Because that character uh, concept design or whatever is pretty cool. And what else is there? Do I have that other, I think, is this it or is it? I'm not sure. This must be it. Yeah. Then we have this scene. I modeled this in 2015, apparently. That's when that's what the file said. I've been working on this since I've been working on this program since like 2015, 2014, something like that. As you can see here, you got all these um you got like this sewer thing. Yeah. And you got the tile set over here. All the different tiles. And you can just like place them down in the scene basically. So yeah. Let's get back to this. Oops, there we go. So as you, as you saw, you can do like more like environmental type stuff, low poly. Hello, Sedo. Sudokun, 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 Sudokun. Welcome to the stream. <laughs> okay, so yeah. I'm making this little character here. <clears throat> I don't want his body too long. So maybe I should start making the legs. Actually, I have an idea. Check this out. What am I doing? <laughs> uh oh, I'm doing some crazy stuff now. Now his legs are small. <laughs> Okay, so Sudoku, Sudoku, how does texture painting uh, painting work in in Proctile three D? 
Uh, okay, I guess I'll show you that. Let's leave his legs there like that. Okay, so we have this. Let's look at his face since I've already kind of started working on that. All right, so we have like these these tiles here that I placed and formed. And if you select them, see their UVs in the UV um, in the UV panel. And uh, so you could uh, position them. Um, on the texture like I did here let's do it for this other one right here so I select this tile it's UVs are over here located right here okay so I can move this this around and look at that it, it displays a different portion of the texture on this little tile here okay so um, let's zoom in where are these other ones Let's put it over here. So if I click and drag it over this direction, I guess it would be, I guess it would go like right here. And then I could like drag these UVs. Yeah, the UV is not bound to the tile. Um, each tile, each each face, each polygon, each tile is constructed of two polygons. Each polygon has three vertices, basically, or that that the, that the polygon corresponds to. Each tile has four vertices, right? Okay, so um, <clears throat> for each of those uh, vertices for a polygon, a triangle, they have a UV coordinate that exists on the texture, okay? And uh, <clears throat> the uh, you can move those around basically, and where they're located on the texture will determine like uh, which portion of the of the texture gets drawn to the to the polygon or the triangle or whatever. So in the UV panel, uh, the, the, you have the ability to control and manipulate where those coordinates are on the, on the texture. So I could take this one, for instance, and then I could rotate it this way or that way, or I could flip it up and down or left and right. I could do it with a bunch of them. I could just select all of them here and then like rotate it that way, rotate it that way, or flip it or whatever. So you have a little bit more control over that sort of stuff. You could also scale it if you want to scale it like that, like that. If you want to change the size of something. Oh, you thought you thought it was only possible to have square UVs? No, you can do more than that. You can you can shape them however you want. Um, so yeah, you just position it like that, and then I could go back over into the painting tab. Uh, first, I want to select the portion that I want to paint on in the tile set uh, in the tile set panel. Just select all this. So now this part, I could start editing it in the painting tab. So I could like move this over, and since I have this button here right here, I could toggle on the UVs. So I could see them while I'm while I'm painting, and then I could just like paint over here within this tile, and it it'll show my work over here. So I could like paint and like look at the same time and kind of judge how how I'm uh, texturing it. Okay. So uh, yeah, or if if you wanted, you could like just select this these vertices or these UVs, and then you could right click and go paint. And you could trace it. You could like trace the UVs like that if you wanted to. And then you could like export. Uh, how do I do this? Export the UV map image if you wanted. 
if you wanted to work on it in another program then like import your work back into here but anyways I'm getting a little sidetracked but I could like fill it with a solid color or I could fill it with a textured color as well where is that I could do that if I wanted that to be textured and then I could see like how the pixels are stretched or not if it's like uh, checkered like that so that's kind of useful and you could also go into the settings under tile sets and change the texture size right now it's just one pixel in size but like if you wanted it like different textures uh, checkered sizes you could adjust that and then there's all these other settings and stuff and uh, let's see but I don't want it textured because it's just a little part there so I'd, I'd go back into painting and then I could uh, draw more on it and yeah so that's kind of how the painting works and you got like this little palette down here that you could choose things and you could like save I don't know if you could see that it's kind of cut off the screen but you could like save and load palettes you could empty the palette or choose the default one or remove duplicates colors if you have duplicate colors in your palette you could also hide or sh show the palette if you want if you don't want to use it and then you have like this the ways of uh, choosing your colors and you could also I am currently working on this alpha slider channel thing so you could like build up uh, stuff you know with transparency if you wanted to like shade things or whatever you could do that well not currently but in the next version that it will be released it will have the alpha channel slider and um, you also have this secondary color here that you could flip between if you want to do that and you could also swap them by pressing X like that does the editor use any libraries Kaminate Kaminate Kaminati Kaminate like Q2 or WX widgets, for example. Okay, so um, uh, I built so Crocodile 3D is programmed in like JavaScript, and it uses the 3.js library for like the 3D stuff, and the NW.js you know node stuff to package it all up and that sort of stuff and distribute it and that's basically it basically that's what I used just program it all in JavaScript and that sort of stuff to have Sudoku Sudoku to have alpha it has to be in some RGBA mode mmm mm, no I think it's already it's just it, it has that already basically it has an alpha channel the texture like for example if I uh, I could I could uh, erase part of it if I uh, whoa what happened there oh I selected that okay <laughs> choose the brush and then there we go so I could erase no that's not erasing yeah, choose the eraser. There we go. So if I erase this, okay, now it's kind of like transparent. He's got like some transparent. Uh, he's like turning invisible. Look at that. It's got some transparency on him. Um. So you can kind of have like transparent parts, but like if you're working with 3D, uh, it's kind of tricky using like transparency and that sort of stuff based on like how things get rendered. Um, I'm not sure how to explain it, but uh, yeah, I think you have to have like 
it in separate textures or separate models or something like that. I think you have to have like transparent stuff on its own tile set and that's another thing. You could have multiple tile sets if you want. You could like add another tile set. You could add a blank tile set if you wanted to create something like that. Like for instance, uh, I'll just create that. So now we have another tile set. Okay, there's another tile set. And you could then cycle through them. There's the default tile set that gets loaded up that's still there. So now we have, we have like three tile sets that are being used. Well, not being used, but available. And then you could like pick from this drop down list, whichever one you want to use. You could remove it if you want. Let's remove that one. And you could combine them. You could like merge them down if you have like duplicates or that sort of thing. You could resize the tile set. You can uh, apply a tile set to the selected faces if you want faces to like to change which tile set it's being they're using. You could export the tile set or import it by adding the tile set. Okay, so Sudoku in Unreal Engine 4, you can use double sided materials as well as sign switch that can change material based on normal orientation. Probably the same thing possible in Unity. Double sided materials, yeah. We have that in Cractile. You can press the, key, the 9 key. As you can see, now the inside of it is all. You can see the inside. I can turn it off or on like that. And when in double sided mode, you could select tiles from the other side if you want. So it doesn't matter wh which side they're facing, you're, they're still selectable. But if you turn it off, then you can't select from the side that you can't see. You can only select from the visible side. But you, there's that mode to turn on if you wanted. But the thing with that is it kind of gets confusing which side they're actually facing if it's double sided mode. If that makes sense. So usually uh, I keep it off just so that I could check which side they're facing. All right. Uh, so what, do I, what was I doing? Oh, yeah. I was modeling the, I was modeling the, uh, the legs. What is going on with the legs? Oh, I guess, haha. <laughs> Yeah, let's see here. Guess I'm doing this all right. Actually, I just thought of something. Is this going to work? I'm just I'm just uh, thinking about the number of polygons on the side of the animal compared to the number of polygons that are on the leg. If you kind of understand what I'm saying. <laughs> I guess it has to, I guess I have to make like a, a pelvis area. Let's change the direction of that maybe, or maybe it's better the other way, I don't know. No, nope, I think it's better that way. And maybe I should move that down. better like that. I think it looks better like that. Okay, 
<laughs> it's kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. His body seems like too... It looks too much like a can. You know what I mean? It's just kind of... Um, it doesn't have much shape to it. It's just kind of cylinder, cylindrical. Yeah, cylindrical. What if I do that? Oh man, what? Yeah, that's, that looks good, right? I guess it looks good. Now he has like a waist. Okay, let's, uh, but this part right here looks kind of weird, looks kind of strange. What's going on here? Wait a second, what? Let's move this back a bit. Yeah, that looks good. I think these, let's select those. He's gonna have a little, uh, uh, that's gonna be his hip right there basically. And is back there. I don't know what's, what's going on back here. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's put it there. It's gonna like, it's gonna curve over there. <laughs> I just realized like. I'm saying that, but you probably don't realize, you probably don't know like what I'm talking about. Because you have to see in like my mind in order to understand. All right, so let's add some more tiles and to work with the shape stuff. Let's put them down there, just out of the way, and then we can like move that. Okay, so we're just kind of like snapping things together. Wait a second, what's going on there? Snapped it to the wrong one. It's all right, we'll just move it like that. This, oops. This one, wait a second. Let's think about this. Let's think about this. How is this going to work? It's kind of a tricky area. Kind of a tricky area to to model. We got we got these two limbs coming together meeting this torso area pelvis it's a tricky area okay let's see here we have that that is weird that doesn't look right Maybe that looks a little bit better. <laughs> mm. Oops. Okay, I think I know what's I think I know what I'm gonna do. Yeah, that I 
think I think that'll work. I'm looking at it from different angles, trying to figure out how to curve things around. Okay. That look right? I have no idea. Maybe this needs to be up like that. Yeah, that looks good. <laughs> and then move this over just a little bit. Maybe like that? Nah, maybe like that. Okay. Whatever. Okay, so let's work on this side. So, hmm, this is weird. So I have to try and figure out what to do back here. Hmm. 
maybe hmm, maybe I could like separate this. Triangle there, we got one, we got one there, one there, one there, one there. Okay, this will work. Is that okay? I guess that works. I don't know. Looks all right. Whoa! What? Maybe change that. There we go. Does that look all right? I guess it looks all right. Can maybe move these up a bit, maybe. I guess that looks all right. Seems okay to me. His back's kind of straight though. I don't know. It's kind of weird there. That's a little bit better. It's kind of mus muscly, mus muscular. Yeah.
start texturing it, I guess. Add some texture, some some detail to the textures. Start doing that. Change things up a bit. Keep things interesting. Let's see, what would I do? Uh, Save it. Save. Alrighty, so let's go into the UVs. Start playing with the UVs. Okay, that goes there. I could just like move that over there, then move this down here, move that over there. Just like that, move that over there. Just like that, move that over there. Just like that one, move that over there. Select this one, move that over there. Select this one, move that over there. Select this one, move that over there. Repeat, repeat. Select that, move that over there. Select this one, move that over there. That one goes to this one, I think. And this one goes to there. Okay. This one goes there. And hmm. Should I keep the? I'm trying to think if I should separate the arm from the body as far as UVs go. Same with the legs. So we have that, 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 that over there. Okay. Wait a second, what's going on here? That's a bit tricky because it splits right here. There's a towel between these two. This one goes that direction, this one goes that direction, and then we have this one right here. What are we gonna do about that? Uh, we can shape this over there maybe and then we can select this and just kind of stick it right in there maybe <laughs> wait a second I'm not sure it's gonna get all stretched and weird We could kind of put that somewhere else, maybe, or mm. decisions. This one seems like it could go in the right there. I think is that where it is? Nope. It's down there. And this one goes down there. OK. 
Okay. So that's well what the it's like got it got all stretched leg up there, huh? That's strange. That's the arm part, so like I could mm, I could select these and probably that one as well. Move those up. Let me remove these up. Wait, what's going on? Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh no, what? Turn on this thing right here. Um, what's it called? Select single or multiple. Use these. If that's on, then I could I could select uh, all the UVs connected. So I don't have to like select them this way like that. If that makes sense. Kind of just shaping things a little bit because the back tiles get all longer. Uh, what? I think this is backwards, isn't it? Hold on a second. So we have to adjust those UVs so that they're the right direction. There we go. And this one has to be rotated as well. I don't know how that happened. There we go. Hmm. Okay, so how big are those? Those are like that scale. And then these are like kind of larger. I could probably scale things down a bit. So I could probably just select all that and deselect those. And then I could, uh, let's see, maybe move that over there. Hmm. I guess I'll just, um, guess I'll move it like this. I'll match it up to the other one. And then I'll do this like that, move this uh, over to about there, I guess. And then I will select all that. I'll move that up there. And then I will deselect those. Move that up a little. Deselect those. Mm, I guess right there. And then move that up about there and I could look at the pixels as well while I'm doing this to see how stretched out they look these look like uh, let's see if I move it up like that they'll become more square that looks about right I guess and these are those look okay I suppose I'll just 
to it. I'll just select that and then move that up like that. And maybe move that like that. It looks okay like that, I guess. I could always adjust it later if I need to. Maybe I'll move it over like that a little bit. Oops. Okay, so I guess we have some of the UVs sorted. Although maybe what's going on here? Maybe these need to be more narrower. <clears throat> if I move this for instance, um, like that. And maybe I can move these over like that. I'm looking at like the checkered pattern while I do this. See if anything looks stretched out or not. It's kind of stretched. Um, I guess that's all right, whatever. <laughs> So we have that portion kind of mapped out a little bit. Now I can um, let's deselect that and that, then select all those. Fill solid. Okay. And also, this one right here could probably move up to connect to that one. Can like get that color and then draw wherever I want that to be. I could use my stylus so I could draw a little bit better. Uh, maybe, is there any other colors? Just kind of rough it in a little bit. Get the general details and that sort of stuff going on.
clean it up later if I want to. Cool. All right. Let's turn off the mesh for a second. Yeah, it looks cool. Look at that. It's got some texture. That's cool. Okay, so um, I want to put a little more. His neck is uh, what's the word? Need some shading under there. See how that looks. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Maybe his shoulder shouldn't be the same as his stomach, I don't know. I want him to have like a darker side on his top and back. And then his stomach area could be a little lighter. So maybe I will change that. I wonder if it'll look good like that. That might be interesting. But then what about his head? Oh, that's kind of cool. He has like wrinkles. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
<laughs> That's cool. looks better than I thought it would. Save it. All right, see a uh, Sidokun, Sidokun. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's see here. I guess I could work on the side of the face. Where's that? Okay, it's over there. Let's go back into the UV mode. Okay, so I could move that. Where's, where'd that tile go? Oh, there it is. Click and drag that vertice over there, there, oop, oop. get on there. Hmm, should it be stretched like that? Uh, maybe I'll just put it like that. I don't know. <laughs> I get a little kind of nervous when I'm when the UVs are all going in different directions <clears throat> because look what happened over there like like with this over here it's all crazy looking I think it's better to keep things a little straight so that things don't get like too confusing or or the pixels get all uh, angled Still learning how to UV map stuff. Mm, I guess that's uh, good. What is going on with that tile?
ici. Alrighty. So I could just select these. Boom, 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 boom. Right click. Fill. I also want to add a little bit of shading, texture, whatever, to emphasize his little cheek area. See how that looks. Zoomed out. Yeah. You could go further back here because, yeah, this back is going to be a little darker. Probably draw that like that. Maybe even do it a little further down. Maybe, maybe line it up a little bit. That looks cool. I like that. Yeah. Okay, where is his ear? Okay, there's his ear. Kind of interesting. All right, see it has core. I'm about to finish two as well. Actually, I think I'm gonna finish now. So yeah, that's all for today. This was basically, I guess, my first stream streaming crocodile. I don't know. I might have done it in the past, but maybe I should do this sort of thing more often. Um, so I'm gonna look into that. I have like just my laptop and I have everything like 
squished on my screen. I have like the browser over on, it's all on the same screen basically. So I need to get like a second monitor or whatever to make things a little easier for me. Although this works as well, it works fine basically. But anyways, so yeah, this is the first uh, stream of uh, Crocodile 3D and I don't know what to think of it. So let me know what you think of it. Maybe I'll upload it onto YouTube, the YouTube channel, and then you can leave a comment there as well. Um, let me know what you want to see about Crocodile 3D. If you need any help with anything, that sort of stuff, just leave a comment and I can get back to you. And yeah, hopefully this is a little helpful or a little insightful or, or whatever. So yeah, and yeah, thanks for watching Daydream Fatigue. Thanks for all the other people that are watching and that sort of stuff. Kind of helps me uh, get a little bit of motiv motivation to do this sort of thing if I know people that are watching and are interested in this sort of stuff. So yeah, until next time, that's uh, all. Okay, so yeah, go check out Crocodile 3D and tell other people about it and that sort of stuff. That'll help out as well. So yeah, thanks for watching. Till next time.